Hi, Smarter News. This is what the flu looked like last year in America. See all that red and dark purple? It was a particularly tough flu season. In fact, one of the deadliest flu seasons for children in modern data collection. Want to see what the flu looks like this year? Check it out. No red, no purple. In fact, last week in America, we ran more than 23,000 flu tests and 21 came back positive. 21. So where did the flu go? I had to ask that question. And after weeks and weeks of reporting, I can tell you, no one knows. I kept waiting and waiting to deliver this report, thinking if I talk to one more doctor, one more expert, I'm going to uncover one of the answers to the great mysteries of our time. And I didn't. <laughs> but I learned a lot in my reporting that I want to share with you. The first being that many of the doctors I spoke with said it's not just flu that they're seeing in lower numbers, but a lot of common respiratory viruses. And that's important because it helps explain this map. The map that I'm showing you actually reflects influenza-like illnesses. It's a data collection process that the CDC uses every year to put together a picture of flu season in America. Because the flu is so pervasive, if the CDC only relied on positive flu tests from laboratories, they'd miss quite a few cases. So the CDC compiles a cornucopia of data, which includes positive flu tests from laboratories, but also information from participating doctors and hospitals to really get an idea of what flu season really looks like. That's not quite the case when it comes to COVID-19. Yes, every state reports the data a little bit different, but when you're seeing headlines that are talking about COVID-19 cases, that's mainly reflecting just COVID-19 positive lab results. So think about it this way. The net that we're casting to talk about the flu is much wider than the net that we're casting to talk about COVID, which makes the fact that we're seeing such few flu cases even more significant. So what happened to the flu this season? Here's a few common, though not definitive answers that I learned in my reporting. Number one, respiratory etiquette a term for our times. What does it mean? Well, we're just a lot more cognizant of doing things like covering our mouth when we sneeze or washing our hands. We're wearing masks. Remember the people that were really close talkers? They're not coming as close anymore. And turns out if you're keeping people away from each other, we actually don't spread viruses as easily. Think about this. Even in places where school districts are open, there may be a fair amount of students that actually aren't attending in person. They're attending virtually. Even where restaurants are open, maybe a lot more people are sitting outside with a little more space between each other. And one of the big takeaways from my reporting is that little changes can actually make potentially a really big difference. Number two, you can't find what you're not looking for. And many doctors tell me that when the flu didn't come crashing onto the scene this fall, they really turned their focus back to COVID-19. It's not that they were ignoring the flu, they were just seeing such few cases. And think about it, it's not just the physicians and testing, it's also about us, the patients. How many people got a respiratory illness over the last year, went and got a COVID-19 test, got a negative result, and then went back to the doctors asking to be tested for the flu? Probably not that many. In fact, I can speak to this. I recently had a respiratory illness. I went to the doctors. I got tested for COVID-19. And the only reason why the doctor tested me for the flu is because I was asking questions because of this report. <laughs> so a one swab test for both the flu and COVID-19 does exist. It's just not being used that frequently. And when it does get used more, maybe we'll see different results. In addition to these points, some doctors say, listen, maybe flu season was just really mild this year by coincidence. Maybe more people got the flu vaccine and the flu vaccine was a really good match. Maybe this, maybe that, maybe a combination of a few different things. But even after all this reporting, I still had some questions. So here are two key ones that I asked. Why would respiratory etiquette and public health measures work against the flu, but not against COVID-19 if they're both respiratory illnesses? Well, doctors tell me that the virus that causes COVID-19 is really different than the flu and that they believe it's just that much more contagious. So when you get the flu, normally you don't feel good. You stay home, you lay on the couch. But when you get COVID-19, doctors still believe upwards of 50% of all cases are asymptomatic, which means you don't really feel anything and you're walking around spreading this virus to the community overall. One doctor raised an interesting point. She says she believes that public health measures are actually working against this brand new virus that none of us have any immunity to. And she says that the American public actually needs to be told that they're doing a good job. We're not having this virus overwhelm hospital capacity like we're seeing in other countries. And we really have no idea what it would look like if we didn't have these public health measures. Does the virus that causes COVID-19 cast a long shadow? Does it basically blast out all the other threatening viruses because it's so brand new and no one has any immunity to it? The doctors I spoke with say no. 
that's not the way that viruses really work, although they found it to be an interesting question. You can have really strong respiratory viruses circulating at the same time. In fact, you can have the flu and COVID-19 at the same time. And just because we're not seeing that this year doesn't mean we won't, which is why doctors are concerned about these variants of the virus that cause COVID along with the severe flu season, what that might mean for you and for the nation's healthcare system overall. But for now, as we near the end of what is typically the final weeks of flu season in America, how long will our flu map stay green? No one knows the answer to that. And as I was preparing for this report, I found myself reflecting on some of our reporting we did way back at the beginning of the pandemic. And that is, you can kill the virus that causes COVID-19. Yes, it is very contagious and it can potentially be deadly, but it's also very fragile. It easily comes apart with a little soap and water. It's like pulling apart a spider web. You just wash it down the drain and we can't forget that. Maybe as we're trying to answer the question, where did the flu go? The most obvious answer is the answer. We wash our hands. We stop touching our face so much and we all stay a little bit healthier. What do you think? Let me know. I'm going to put some of this data underneath this video on our website so you can access it for yourself. In the meantime, stay healthy, and I'll see you with more on smarternews.com.